Hey y'all, welcome to part five of my tissue culture series. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how I do my transfers in my transfer box up there. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really nervous about this video. Um, there's just a lot of steps to this and it's really, really complicated and it's a really crucial part of the tissue culture process and I wanna make sure that everything is perfect for you guys. And I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really think this video through very well. Um, so we're kind of just winging it and Hopefully I cover everything okay. Um, I am gonna kind of talk you through the process and then I'm gonna do a demo. And the reason for that is that I just don't wanna be talking a lot near my transfer box and moving, moving my hands and all that stuff. There are many, many ways to do this. Um, so I'm just gonna show you what I have come up with. This works best for me. Obviously I don't have a laminar flow hood. If you have access to a laminar flow hood, that's gonna make things a lot simpler. But if you don't, no worries, it's totally fine. I don't work in a laminar flow hood and I don't have any issues. It took me a while to perfect my technique. Um, you know, there for a while I was getting some contaminations here and there, but since I started implementing my new technique, um, I have not had, knock on wood, a single contamination so far. Anyways, I'm struggling with my words today, so we're gonna go ahead and just get into the video. So the most important part of my transfer process is the prep work. As you can see right here, this is where I do all of my transfers at. I use that little box right up there. Um, I just put it on my desk and that's where I do all of my transfers. The goal is to get your area as sterile as possible. My environment is not technically sterile, but it is heavily disinfected. So I start prepping my workspace by making sure the vent above my work area is closed. I actually keep that one closed all the time because it's not really necessary since I have another vent in my kitchen and I have a couple in my living room over here. Um, so I don't really need it. It doesn't really serve any purpose and it is directly over my plants and my workspace. So it's easier for me to just keep it closed at all times. If you can't keep yours closed at all times, just make sure that it is closed while you're working if you do have a vent near your work area. The second thing that I do is I make sure that my air conditioning is turned off, all of my fans are turned off, and my windows and doors are all shut. You don't want any air circulating in your work area because that's gonna contribute to contaminations. The next thing that I do is I make sure that my work area is as clean as I can possibly get it. So that doesn't include just my desk. That means the floors, that means my kitchen counters, there's no dirty dishes laying in my sink. I make sure the whole area is as clean as I can possibly get it. So I sweep and I mop and I add bleach to my mop water. I spray down my kitchen counters with bleach and I spray down my work table with bleach as well. So everything is disinfected and just as close to sterile as I can possibly get it without actually being sterile. So those are two really, really, really important steps. You don't wanna skip out on either one of those. Make sure there's no air circulating and make sure everything is super, super clean. Um, I use 10% bleach. I have some in a spray bottle and that's what I spray everything down with. I also keep my tools that I'm using, my forceps and my um, knife in a jar of 10% bleach and that's just what I like to use. Um, I always wear gloves and a mask whenever I'm working because I need to spray down my hands with bleach before I put them in my box. If you pull your hands out of your box, you need to make sure you spray them down again before putting them back in your box. Anything that goes into your box needs to be sprayed down with bleach. I also wear a mask just to make sure that I'm not breathing any contaminants into my transfer box as well. As far as my plate that I work on, um, I have sterilized it before in my Instant Pot and that worked well, um, but now I kind of feel that it's just an unnecessary step. Uh, what I do now is I just spray down the plate with the 10% bleach and let it set and that seems to do just fine. If you wanna sterilize your tools and your transfer plate in an Instant Pot, you totally can. It's really simple and easy to do. Um, like I said, I just feel like it's kind of an unnecessary step. I've cut it out and I don't get any contamination. So um, it's just easier to not do that part and the bleach seems to work okay. I like to start out by spraying down all the sides of my box, including the front face that I have saran wrap. I spray down the inside of that as well. Um, and then I spray everything that I put into the box. 
After everything is sprayed down and in the box, I let it sit out for about 20 minutes or so before I start working. Once everything has been sitting in the bleach for at least 20 minutes, then I am okay to begin working. Oh, my foot's asleep. Okay, so once I'm ready to start working in my space, when it comes to selecting my containers from which I'm gonna be taking my subcultures from, I just look to see which ones have really developed shoots. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples. This right here is a caramel marble. I don't know if you can see it very well. There's a little bit of a glare, but this guy is ready to go. Um, this part of the cluster will stay in here and then I'll just cut off all these other matured shoots. There's probably four or five in this one that I'm gonna take. And then I have this one as well. Again, this small cluster down here, I'll leave it in the container. I actually might switch it over to um, a different media. I haven't decided yet, but sometimes I'll leave them in the containers they were already in. Sometimes I'll move them to a different one, but this one is ready to go as well. And again, it probably has four to five shoots. Um, this is, oh, you can't see. These are wizards and I have some in here. You can't really see, but there are some in here that are matured and ready to be subcultured. Same thing with these guys, wizards again. Um, I've got quite a few in here that are ready to be subcultured. I know it's hard to see with all of the condensation, but um, you guys will see once I get the containers open. Okay, so I think that concludes the talk through portion of this video. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning my workspace and get everything set up. Then we can begin the demo part of this video. So I will see you guys in just a second. Okay, so as you can see, I have my mask and my gloves on. And here is my workspace. I have my containers over here. This is my plate. I spray bleach on it and then I just stand it up with the face of the plate leaned up against the back of the tub. And then I have over here my tools that are sitting in 10% bleach. The whole entire tub has been sprayed down with bleach as well and we are about to get started. Okay, so we are now ready to begin working. I'm going to start by taking my container and removing the saran wrap around the edge of the container. It's best to try to do this on the side of your work plate. You really want to avoid reaching over your plate. My box is really small, so that's kind of hard to do, but I just do the best I can. Okay, so I'm going to open up my container and then just pull out the clusters that I think are ready. This one doesn't really have very many, but I think I can get a couple. So we're going to try for these. I'm just going to close that back up. Set that aside. Okay, then I just take my knife. You have to be careful soaking these in bleach because it will cause them to corrode. But I just replace the blade every time, so it's fine. But I think I'm going to take this piece right here. So I'm just going to make a nice little cut right there. This guy's really pretty, but it's kind of small. Um, I might try to take it. Whoops. That one might die. We'll see. So I'm just going to set that to the side. Pull these over here. 
look around for some more. Okay. Uh, sometimes they'll just literally fall off. I might be able to work with that. We'll see. Hmm. Yeah, they're just falling off, which kind of helps. Let's see if we can just pull them apart. I might. Hmm. I'll put this over here. What's that? Very nice. What about you? Not quite. I really want this. I'm just not sure where to cut. I think we're going to call that good for that cluster. And since this container is not sealing correctly, I'm just going to set it aside and we're going to transfer those to a new container. Okay, same thing. I think that's the only one. So we're just going to put those back in here. Make sure that everything going to go for these caramels. Okay, so these have a lot of roots, which is amazing. So it's always best to try to take plants that also have a root. This is the first time I've ever taken any Explants off of a caramel marble. So I'm going to bring this over here. I'll separate that once we're done. I'm just going to put it back in. Okay, I'm going to call it good for the caramels. I think we have enough. Okay, and then I'm going to grab a fresh container to move these other wizards in. And 
and then I'm gonna pull these other ones out their container because I think the lid is like sealing all the way I don't want them to get contaminated so I'm just gonna pull them out gonna set these off to the side okay so now that I don't have to worry about contamination anymore everything is out of the way I'm gonna go ahead and re saran wrap pair of film these containers so I can put them back on the shelf then I'm gonna pull this out and start cutting up these guys to get them down to individual platelets and then we will also plant them okay so I'm just gonna cut these up a little bit more I can. I'm gonna try to leave at least one root on every plantlet. Two. And yeah, let's separate this. Oh. Um, I can't really tell what's going on here. Okay. Oh, I'm cutting right at my finger. Okay. We might make something out of that. Okay. There's those. Okay, this one's really complicated. Uh, I might be able to break it apart. Mm. Okay, that's all we're doing with those. And these guys are already separated. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my seedling trays and get those set up. So I'm laying here in bed editing and I just realized that there was a whole portion of the video where I wasn't recording. Um, I was trying to show you guys the part where I put them into the trays and um, that whole part didn't get recorded. Um, it's not super important if you guys just go back and watch my acclimation video. Um, I think I have, it's the same thing, but it's just going to be with different plants, which is fine. Um, so you're not really missing very much. Also the plants that I'm about to show you, I said those were put into the trays on August 3rd. Um, it was actually July 29th. So they're a little bit older than I said they were in the video. Sorry guys. So I have them in their trays and they are labeled with what they are and the date. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put the dome lids on and get them over on the heat mat. Okay, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys what they look like um, roughly a month after pulling them out of tissue culture. I took these guys out on August 3rd and today is August 28th, I believe. So this is what they look like. They're all a really good size. This one right here is teeny tiny um, because you can see it has a lot of variegation. So those tend to grow quite a bit slower, um, but the rest of them are doing really, really well. And I'm actually going to be potting these guys today. Okay, y'all, so that concludes the video for today. I hope it was helpful and not a total shit show. I'm about to edit through that mess and I'll try to piece it together in a way um, that makes sense. Um, and as always, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can just leave a comment down below or you can reach out to me on Facebook or on Instagram and the links to my social media will be 
in the description box. If you haven't seen my other videos in the tissue culture series yet, you should definitely check those out as well. And if you guys have any suggestions for future videos, um, please let me know what you guys would like to see. But I think that is all for today. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!